I'm Video Bob, and this is my 1994 Ford Taurus station wagon. It's purple. You probably think it's hideous, and that's why I love it. Ah, oh, this thing is so mint. It's only got 55,000 original miles. Okay, it's not mint. It's a little beat up cosmetically on the outside. This thing is like 27 years old. This is a second generation Ford Taurus. I gotta tell you, I love these. I've had a lot of these. I had an 86 sedan, which was our rebel cop police car that we had at our shop in Dallas. Had an 87 gold wagon. Had a 1990 sedan. Had a, let's see, a 92 also. Had a 94 version just like this that was emerald green with a gray interior. Then I got a white uh, 98 that had a gray interior. And then I later also got a 97 sedan with a gray interior. This one is this eggplant color of purple and has a tan interior. And this tan interior is pretty much the same as my 2003 Ford Excursion that I have. I noticed it has the same mirror switches and buttons pretty much. It's one of the cool things about Ford. They don't really change a lot of their stuff that often. The engine that was in these cars, the Vulcan V6 engine, these things kind of run forever. It was the transmissions that went out on them. They had this XOD front wheel drive transmission that by the time the car got to about 150,000 miles or so, it was gonna cost you 1,500 to $2,000 to fix the engine. And by that time, you could pick one of these up for two or three grand and people just didn't wanna spend the money to fix them. So they sent them off to the crushers and got something else. The crazy thing is you just never see these cars anymore. They were so ubiquitous, they were everywhere. You couldn't walk without tripping over a Ford Taurus. And now you can't find these at all. Where did they all go? Look at the ass end of this thing. When I was a kid and I saw the first Ford Taurus station wagon, probably 86, and I saw these futuristic looking taillights and this round bubble top, I'm telling you, this thing was, it looked like a spaceship. I mean, it looked super futuristic. Might look weird now to you kids 30 years later, but this thing was a spaceship back then, which is why they used the car in the movie RoboCop in 1986 as RoboCop's police car of the future. It was really a, a cutting edge technology in the car industry. And I think that that's something I really wanna push the point on and why I love these cars so much. This one I got on Marketplace from a guy who says he got it from a state, the old woman who had it, who hardly ever drove it. She died, the family wanted to just get rid of it. He put it up on, an under, on the uh, underappreciated survivors page on Facebook. I contacted him immediately and I got the thing for a great deal. Still has the uh, license plate, I love it. You know, it's a big purple beast. It's a BBC. Big, beautiful car. Also have a spare storage here. This can be removed and you got your tire mounted here. I don't think that's ever been used, but great place to hide a spare tire. I know a lot of people probably put subwoofers in there later on. Another unique thing about this tailgate was that you could open the glass separately if you didn't want to open the entire gate. You could just set your groceries down in there, whatever you wanted to do. Or you close this, make sure that's closed, and then you can open the gate. Now, interesting, interestingly, you have to use a key to do that. There's no handle here. Now, this being the GL, it doesn't have the trunk popper. The LX versions, which is the one you want if you can get it, had the ability to pop the trunk from inside the car. This one doesn't have that. Well, when you're not going to Home Depot to pick up sheets of plywood or whatever else you're putting in here, these seats fold back and definitely hold full-size adults, no problem. I mean, I'm 6'2", 220 pounds. I fit back here, tons of room, got my own little grab handle. Now, normally on the better trim levels, you'd have an armrest that would fold, fold down and sometimes even have leather seats. This one is a GL. This is a very base model and, you know, didn't have a lot of the luxury refinements. 
I have my own window control and an ashtray because of course people were still smoking. And, but it, it's a nice comfortable ride. You can easily fit two big full-size people back here or even three and they even give you accommodations for that. And like I said, you can fit two more people in the back. So imagine a car that you could buy for this low price that had all of these different amazing comforts and the ability to travel. That's why you would see these cars portrayed as like the Griswold family truckster station wagon or as the dad vehicle, soccer mom, this kind of thing. And it got that bad reputation, but I think that this is a fantastic utility vehicle because it got great gas mileage and you could fit the world in here. If you have a big family, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people, whatever, dogs, cats, lots of stuff. I mean, I bought this car specifically just for going to the store. First day I had it, I took it to Costco and filled this thing up in the back and bought all kinds of stuff. Then I went to Walmart, went to, you, you go to Home Depot. I mean, that's what is great about these cars because it's an everyday driver, fits in a regular parking spot. And compared to my giant Ford Excursion and some of the other vehicles I have, it's just really practical. And I think that's why people hate it. Inside this car, in my opinion, not much has changed in the last 30 years. I mean, the only thing that would be really different would be a big touchscreen here. This radio is the original tape deck. And, you know, back in the 90s, they didn't put aux auxiliary input jacks on the tape decks and CD players because there really wasn't a portable thing other than a portable CD or tape player to plug in. And people certainly weren't using their phones. Now, I've added this little magnet here that holds that phone that's recording this right now. And I set it here and inside the uh, cigarette lighter plug here is my plug. And uh, I'm just listening to the regular radio. I may change this out with a, another unit that I found that I've talked about before, which is a single den but double face unit that plugs in and has the face that hangs down for exactly these type of hookups. Now there's a coin holder and a cup holder that pop out here, but they're both kind of broken, so I'm not really using them. But everything else in here is kind of the same up until not that long ago. When I get in my other Ford vehicles that go back, you know, a few years, same controls, same kind of steering wheels, same kind of dash, same bunch of buttons. I mean, it does everything that a modern car does with the exception of having a fancy radio, which is an easy thing to put in. You really have airbags and everything else. So really, I guess my point is that in today's world where people are having a hard time getting a hold of new cars, this is a really good bargain if you can find something like this. Here's a car with 55,000 miles on it. Still runs and drives and operates 100% perfectly. And it's, in my opinion, kind of cool because it's kind of Radwood era. And, you know, I've got like 3,500 bucks in this car so far. I might put a little bit more in it, but I, this car is like new. It runs like new, and I really do enjoy driving it. Starts right up, runs just fine, cold AC, nice warm heater, and I'm not really missing any of the tech that's in some of my newer cars. My daily driver is a Rolls-Royce Phantom, and which is really the reason I bought this, because I don't like taking the Rolls-Royce uh, yeah, cry me a river, right? But I don't like taking it to like Walmart and Costco and Home Depot and things, even though it's my daily driver. It has a huge trunk, but I don't want to go pick up things that might dirty it or get door dings. And, you know, people always make a spectacle. Oh, look at this guy with his Rolls Royce. Did you come to Walmart to get some more Grey Poupon? No. So I bought this to be just my grocery getter, which is what it's made for. And it does a fantastic job at it. Again, same basic controls that I find on my other Fords that aren't that old. Electric windows, power mirrors, same controls. That's a good thing that Ford does because you can still get these parts today, even though this car is impossible to find. All right, let's check out the business end of this thing. Now you'll notice there is a lot of dents and scratches and spider webs and all kinds of paint damage on this car, but I'm fine with it. All right, this is the three liter V6 motor that they put in just about every Ford Taurus from like the beginning to the end. 
It's a solid motor, front wheel drive, transverse, and quite frankly, I've never had one of my Ford Tauruses fail other than the transmission. You might go through an alternator or a water pump. That could happen. I don't think it happened with any of my cars. I don't recall, maybe an alternator. But uh, I seem to remember my 87, I had to replace the uh, radiator at some point. And I think my 86, we had to replace that ECU. But good Lord, you're talking about 30 year old cars, right? And there's just, I don't know, this motor is a great motor. I'm sure there's haters out there that'll talk about some of its faults. But this is not what killed this car. This car was a very reliable car, ran great. And um, other than having to build, rebuild a transmission for 1500 bucks every 10 years or so, that's not what hurt this car. There's a lot of talk and speculation over what killed the Ford Taurus. Some people would say it was the transmission. Uh, others would say that it was just progress. People didn't like this body style anymore, be it the wagon or the sedan. They wanted crossovers. They wanted, uh, you know, the new Explorers. They wanted minivans. And maybe that's all true. I don't know. There's a lot of different things that all came together about the same time. You had the cash for clunkers program, but this was such a cheap car. Didn't cost a lot of money. We're talking 15 to 20 grand. And you really got a lot of car, but there were so many of them. I think that we just took them for granted. That's kind of my real opinion on it. You saw these cars everywhere you went. I mean, I'm telling you growing up in the 80s and the 90s, the parking lots were half full of Ford Tauruses back when I was growing up. And this car was voted best car in America year after year after year because it was simply the best value. You got the most amount of car for the least amount of money. They were super safe and they were super futuristic. You know, the 86 Ford Taurus, it was one of the, it was like one of the first cars that had the wraparound bumpers instead of a chrome bumper and had these wraparound headlights, didn't have a grill. This thing looked super space age for the time. You know, and a lot of car buyers didn't like that. They wanted the traditional chrome grill and the traditional bumpers and the sealed beam headlights. They just weren't ready for this kind of change. They thought it looked too European. But I loved it. When I saw this thing, I fell in love with it. Like I said, when I was a kid, it, to me, looked like a spaceship. Now, you probably heard about the Taurus SHO, or the show, which was, at one time, the fastest production four-door car that was made. I remember Conan O'Brien had one. He bragged about how great this car was. It was a five-speed, it had a Yamaha turbo motor. That thing was amazing. But they never made a show wagon. It was always my dream to have a show wagon. So what happened to my love of the Ford Taurus wagon? Well, the Dodge Magnum. In 2003, I was still driving my 1998 Ford Taurus wagon that I had. And when I saw the Dodge Magnum make its appearance with that Hemi V8, I was sold. And I bought two of them. I bought one, drove 250,000 miles on it, bought another one. By the time I was done with that one, I moved up to the Cadillac CTS-V wagon, which was a 2014 model. And then I had a, that one, and then I bought another one just like it. And the only reason I didn't get another one is they just didn't make them anymore. I couldn't get them. And then after that, I, I got the Rolls-Royce Phantom. And if they made a Rolls-Royce wagon, I think I'd have one. But I bought this as my everyday beater, and it brings back such amazing memories and joy for me every time I hop in this thing and drive it around. And I love the looks on people's faces because for me, it's a very familiar car, but for so many people, they've never even seen one or they haven't seen one in a long time. Now, even though I've had a lot of these cars, I cannot say that I am a Ford Taurus expert. I am not. I always went for the top trim level package back when you could get them pretty easily to get the uh, LX models and they would have the leather interior. They would have, like my 87, it had a digital dash. It had air lumbar support. I mean, it had everything. It had the keypad on the door uh, where you could punch in a code and unlock the car and have remote entry. This particular one um, is this base GL model. A sticker right on the window here says, built in Chicago with pride, made in America. This one has just the regular steel wheels with the hubcaps doesn't have the automatic uh, twilight lights, doesn't have the, pow you know, the power trunk or the keypad or the remote keyless entry. Whoever bought this car was pretty cheap about it. They didn't want to spend any money on any options. They got no options on this car, which is interesting because it came in a pretty cool color. Uh, this is like a pearl, like a 
kind of an eggplant, kind of a deep purple color. And I don't think I've ever, I mean, I'm sure I've seen them back in the day. I just don't remember them. They were usually white or green or gold um, or blue, but uh, this was a pretty rare color. And um, being that this car lived its whole life in New Mexico, I don't know, maybe, you know, they like kind of colors like that there. That, you know, like, uh, they like turquoise, they like blue, this purple. I love this purple. I love purple. I have, a, I have purple in my house. And, and this is a beautiful color. We tried buffing it out a little, but the paint is just too far gone. It's been sitting in the sun for the last 27 years. But uh, it still has the original books and a lot of paperwork and things. And I did verify that it has actually 55,000 original miles on it. And you can tell from the quality of everything in the car and the way it runs that it really is like a brand new car, even though it's got some age. I'm gonna, being that I live here in Las Vegas, I'm gonna go ahead and tent all these windows as black as they'll go. But I'm not gonna really put a lot of time and effort into the car. I may change out that radio and put in an Apple CarPlay unit, but really I only drive it for short drives. I just drive it down to the grocery store and back. And it's one of these cars like, I don't really care if it gets dinged up or whatever. That's the whole point of the car, that it's a beater. But at the same time, there's a part of me that thinks this could be a huge collector's item one day. Maybe it's worth doing a little paintless bit repair or something and then repainting the car or having the paint refinished. Because just like we're seeing right now, if you can find like an original Country Squire Ford LTD, I'm seeing those go for crazy money. And then maybe that's gonna happen with these. Maybe you could tell me in the comments what you think about where the value of these is gonna go. Maybe this will be a valuable car one day. I thought about doing something crazy, talking about the uh, Country Squire. I thought about getting some of that fake vinyl wood trim and doing the uh, Griswold wood all down the side and just making it as hideous as I could possibly get it because I think it's hilarious. <laughs> I wanted to try to give you a bit of a shot of the dash of this thing. Uh, it's kind of hard to do and the sun is starting to get low, super bright, but I wanted you to see how the interior looked. You either think it's glorious or you think it's hideous, but honestly, it's not that different from my pickup truck that I drive. So I would demonstrate the rear wiper and washer there's a rear defrost as well. You're gonna hear this thing dinging at you. It's the one thing I hate about this car is the dinger. But here's the uh, rear wiper and the washer. Takes a second for it to kick in. There it goes. And there you go, rear wiper. Now shut up. I thought this was sort of interesting. I'm gonna put it in gear just to move this out of the way so you could see this a little better. You can reach down here and operate the radio by turning up the volume this way. And of course, I don't want to do that. But they didn't have steering wheel controls. You have a horn. You have your on and off for cruise control, resume, set, excel, coast. And they figured that was just enough stuff, right? So they put the volume to the radio, memory and seek right here. You could turn up the volume, hit seek. Interesting. Or you could go cycle through the memory. And I thought, I'll probably never use this, but I do find I kind of rest my hand here and I operate it that way, which why not just reach here? I mean, what difference does it make? But you have it, you have a nice uh, digital clock here, which I kind of like having. The controls are really straightforward as far as the air conditioning and heater goes. Uh, standard vents like they use pretty much still. You do have some control with the tilt here. You can tilt this up and down manual operated seats. The gauges are really simple. You got a fuel gauge, you got a temperature gauge, you got a speedometer. Then you have warning lights, all right? That's pretty much it. There's a rear defroster over here and your headlights over here. And again, I added this little magnet to put my phone. But that's pretty much it. And I find that I don't really need anything more than that. Yeah, let's go for a little cruise. Pretty good visibility in the car. I mean, you can see all the way around. I love how when you're looking in the rear view mirror, the entire rear window is completely, you know, can be seen. So lots of really good visibility in this car, which can be bad with all the sunshine. I, I wouldn't want to be a kid sitting in that back rumble seat with the sun beating down on me and that fishbowl roasting me. Uh, that wouldn't be any fun. 
especially here in Las Vegas or in New Mexico where this car came from. But from the looks at it, uh, it doesn't look like anybody's ever sat back there. Doesn't look like they've ever opened it. Uh, looks like really the only people that's ever sat in here is maybe the driver's seat. A little bit of wind noise in the car. It's not as quiet as what I'm used to. Of course, I'm a little spoiled. I drive a Rolls Royce Phantom normally and it doesn't make any noise at all. But for a regular car, it's not too bad. I personally feel like it's a lot smarter to buy a decent used car if you have cash. You know, I've, I've poked fun at cars like, for instance, the Nissan Altima and the Kia Soul, simply because I wonder like, who, why, why, why'd you buy one of those cars? I mean, I guess if you're paying 200 bucks a month and it's financed and you just need something with a warranty that's supposed to be reliable, but quite frankly, if you have a few bucks to put down, there's still a lot of great cars out there like this one that you can find for under 5,000 bucks. Um, and it'll serve you well for a lot of years. I mean, a car like this has proven its worth. And, you know, the fact that you can't find them, I think has less to do with uh, their reliability and more to do with just the politics of cars. You know, I think Ford might have figured out if they sell a really good car that you keep for 20 years, well, then you don't buy a new car every year. So they need to build cars. You know, they don't want to build unreliable cars because no one will buy under their brand. But they do want to innovate and change things to make you want the next new thing. You know, for instance, like that new electric Mustang. It doesn't look anything like a Mustang. It's got Mustang taillights, kind of. But people... You know, it's a completely different concept of car. So it's not even comparable. So hey, I hope you enjoyed going for a ride with me here in my 94 Ford Taurus station wagon. I love this thing. Uh, I got carried away. I waited for a drive. I drove all the way out to Hoover Dam, went out into the desert. I just, uh, just got lost in this thing. I don't know, I love it. <laughs> takes me back to so many great memories that I've had with these these cars and uh, it just takes me back to that place when I was in my 20s and the whole world was ahead of me and you know I could have never even dreamed back when I was driving one of these for you know my everyday car that I would ever have the car collection that I have and if you're interested in seeing more of that cool car collection well Visit me here on this channel. Just become a subscriber. Make sure to turn on the notifications so you'll be uh, told whenever there's something new coming up. Here comes one of my buddies. You know, I also have some ambulances like that. You should check out the ones we're working on. We're doing a lot of fun stuff. At this time, I'm not selling this car, so don't ask me to sell it. Uh, maybe I will one day. I don't know if I find a better one. If you find a better one uh, and <laughs> you want to sell it to me, let me know. Maybe I'll buy it off you. But until then, uh, stay tuned and uh, keep watching some of my cool car videos and all the fun stuff I do here in Las Vegas. I've really enjoyed making these videos for you guys. And thanks for being fans. Thanks for being Patreons. And, and thanks for all the fun stuff that uh, we've done together over the last, I don't know, 15 years of being on YouTube. Check you guys uh, later. <laughs> I gotta go on video, Bob. <laughs> Big, beautiful car.